There we go. All right, hey, we are live here from Twilio Signal, San Francisco Moscone Center. There's about, what, four or 5,000 people here. But I'm here with Dan Miller, <laughs> who Hello. is the lead analyst and founder of Opus Research. One of the leading and first voices when it came to this whole area of voice and speech technology and all those kinds of things. So thanks for joining yeah. me, man. Well, voice, <laughs> thank you. <coughs> this will be fun. Um, yeah, it, it's voice, it's voice, <coughs> excuse me, wow. Um, it, it's conversational uh, intelligent assistance. I, I, <laughs> yes, I kind of, assist, that's I, right. I've, I've come up with this, I, you know, we, we, um, we may have entered the era of conversational AI, <laughs> but I, there's so many people that just get up and say, um, well, AI, you were talking about a general AI, and so we have to sort of debunk um, <laughs> this myth. Um, but, it, but it's really, really attractive to talk about because what, what um, companies want to know right now is um, what, what the other people are investing in. Right, <laughs> right. So, exactly. so you, if you generalize and say, oh, there's $60 billion being spent on conversational AI, then you get the, well, what the hell is that? <laughs> well, let, let's do it. Okay. Well, what the hell is it? Because there are a lot of people using that term, and right. sometimes it's like one person says it, and it has a completely different kind Absolutely. of meaning. Right. So what, is, what do you say? What is it for you? Um, well, so we put the technologies that we cover under a huge umbrella called conversational commerce. Okay. And then within that, um, as you look at the application of elements of AI, and probably the most important, it really is machine learning. That's what's revolutionized um, the ability for uh, computers to understand us, <laughs> um, uh, whether we're typing or talking. A lot of the early recognition of what some people were saying happened on the voice channel. So there's some early work done <laughs> with slow neural networks um, that, that built um, essentially uh, di operational dialogues. Um, but, and, and since we weren't going to talk about, oh, what's hot at signal <laughs> sort of thing. Um, there's a constant tug of war between what's going on with intelligent virtual agents that use natural language understanding, which is part of the machine learning family, um, and constant improvement, and constant improvement in the ability to understand what we're saying, mm -hmm. and um, what does that have to do with IVRs and, my, and investments that um, companies have made in these systems that answer the phone and do automated handling today right. of, of you know people calling in for customer support uh, to get a question answered uh, increasingly in res well and, and in response to a promotion <laughs> that's how it all started um, and and increasingly to, to um, maybe buy something so um, that's that's what we're figuring out so I mean like where are we today in the spectrum uh, over the last couple of years, of course, it seems like things kind of sped up or got more broader appeal when the smart speakers came aboard <laughs> yep. and people could actually talk to a device and get a question answered quickly or get a service, some service request fulfilled. So it seemed over the last four or five years, it's, it's definitely picked up and spread out and right. seen all sorts of different use cases. But, you know, you've been there 20, 30 years. So yeah. where do you see things today? as opposed to where they were a few years ago. That's a great question. Because I, I went back in the Opus Research archive, because um, uh -huh. uh, we've covered what we called back then the telephony API. Um, uh, I'm, I'm thinking the first report I wrote was in 2011, and it was wow. saying that here's what's going to happen is, um, the and, and this is what's going on with Twilio specifically at Signal, is that it's part and parcel of, of how the world <laughs> has um, become API driven. We live in a right. developer's world. We get to cohabit with them, but right. in this place <laughs> of the 4,000 people you're talking about, 99.5% yeah. <laughs> are developers <laughs> right. here. Right. And, and you can say the same thing about, you know, I was at the Voice Summit last week, right. and that was, you know, 3,000, 4,000 people, and they were all developers wow. too. 
Um, so there, there's tremendous am amount of energy in Dev Nation going on right now. Um, there are, uh, at least in the Voice Summit, there's some real similarities of what went on uh, with apps. <laughs> Um, right. But but one of the one of my takeaways from yesterday was was up on the screen when when Jeff um, was talking. The, Jeff, Jeff Lawson, by Jeff the way. Jeff Lawson. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Jeff Lawson. C yes. <laughs> um, and it just said conversations are replacing apps. Right. And or it is eating apps. It's sort of yeah. like software eats uh, whatever. Now yeah. it's that. Yeah. The other thing that stood out for me too is uh, you know being the CRM background. Customer engagement was like their third pillar. Yes. And, and then talked about it from the standpoint of what they announced with Toilet Conversations. But the thing that really stood out as he was talking about this is he talked about how customer journey is really the company's brand today. Yeah. Which to me... Something of a stretch. <laughs> it, it's a stretch, but you could actually see that potentially happening because as services and experiences become as much or as, as important as products are today, right? those tie together and create something like a, a customer journey that could be your brand at some point. Yeah, and, and you know what, what's, what's good making that part of Twilio's story is that we're entering a world where, um, you know, sort of the lockdown, well, the contact center has been <laughs> redefined. So, right. and, and, you know, once you accept the fact that um, there's now um, uh, communications platforms as a service or set of services right, right. <laughs> and APIs right. and one of those uh, one of the categories within that is the contact center as a service meaning that you know there's some core customer interaction management stuff that takes place and then there's a marketplace of microservices and APIs that require the kind of brains that are you know that this developer community is is growing comfortable with yeah. we and this is in your answer to, to your question of well, what's different now from five years ago there there wasn't there was there weren't these tools um, and there weren't this there wasn't this community of interested developers who found telephony interesting I mean wow. phones go off the hook <laughs> delivered dial tone completed a call um, IVRs played a message <laughs> and and now um, they're not discreet, and to your point, it, it, it's not necessarily a journey. It is cap the interactions that take place are better captured as a conversation, right? An asynchronous conversation, and then it takes a company like like Twilio, and, and you know, there's others in the you know, there's there's Vonage, there's what Amazon's doing with right. Connect, yeah. and they're and they're all um, trying to figure out. Um, how you weave together the moments that individuals either want to talk to one another <laughs> or talk or you know talk, talk or chat I'm right. using this sort of <laughs> communicate um, right. communicate <laughs> with others and and build the confidence that when they choose to do that you know it's me right. I, I know it's you and and we can be produ more productive at our own um, at achieving our own objectives and and we're better off doing it with this kind of infrastructure than what the, the old dinosaur bones <laughs> of, the, of the phone system. Well, let's face it. Uh, well, it's funny because email is still really the, the dominant channel when it comes to interaction. I think they popped up a, an astounding number of, like they have 80,000 companies oh, that, that are sending scary. 50 billion emails yeah. a, a month or <laughs> right, something they like had, that. They had the entire, <laughs> they put all these zeros after like, right. how, how, what was that? Unbelievable, yeah. yeah. It, so you have, it's still email is, is, is prevalent. And then they started talking about, you know, apps and particularly with uh, texting, of course, but yeah. apps, like what apps? It, it, particular 53% response rates. Yeah when you interact through WhatsApp, at least that's what they found with their customers. And we all know that that's an unbelievable number. Yeah, <laughs> well, um, right. So, so when um, Twilio bought SendGrid, right. and that's, what, that's the context of what we're talking yeah, about the here. the email part. And, that, yeah. and um, SendGrid is, is um, I mean, their main product is validating vo uh, email addresses for companies so they have confidence that when they do send out one of those, quote, targeted, unquote, emails that, 
is not spam. They <laughs> insist um, that 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 it's going to a, a legitimate mailbox. Somebody who actually is expecting an email from them. Right. Yeah. And then you may ask, well, you know, Twilio. So Twilio started out um, as a family of telecom APIs, um, and then in its early days, the organic. Uh, demand for it. What developers wanted to do was get a lot, I mean it's phone, right? They yeah. get a lot of phone numbers uh, and initially they discovered that it was a great tool for bulk texting. Right. And, and texting in this case is a precursor to all the messaging platforms. So when you, said, when you started talking about apps but then brought up WhatsApp, WhatsApp is a messaging platform. It, I mean everything manifests as, as an app on a smartphone. Right. Right. But, it, but at that point you're, you're logged on to WhatsApp, you're authenticated because you logged on to WhatsApp, um, and you do stuff as you in a, in a messaging context. And right. um, yes, it's an engaging thing, it's addictive, but when you try to, when you what message a brand, you usually uh, have an objective in mind. Right. And if a brand messages you, right. um, um, it, it's, it's not as spammy <laughs> or undirected. So the 53% sounds about right, mm -hmm. but it is a shock to, to email people. You know, yeah, you said like they're three and four or five well, percent open yeah. rates? Open rates. Right, open rates. Right, right. and not then even some, right. Even so respond, some right. percent, <laughs> so you know, we're, we're kind of improving, if, if the idea is to improve the conversation, right using conversation as the engagement model as opposed to inaccurately sending out <laughs> some uh, just stimulant. Blasting, right? Yeah, just yeah, blast away. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, we have better tools and, yeah. and that's what's being validated here. The other thing that was really, you know, there's really, there's a couple things. Uh, the, the ending was interesting because of the way that they showed it's really a, being able to add in people to the conversation regardless of what channel it's on and for a company to be able to, to orchestrate that right. in order to, to create the kind of ending experience that is going to leave uh, the customer who's looking for a service or for help yeah. satisfied. <laughs> Yeah, and this was a you had to have been there yeah. moment. I mean, they, they had people dressed up as birds and puppies and the pilot. But, yeah. but they started out with a totally plausible situation right. where within a messaging platform, when a brand, you know, a, a person is engaged with the airline. Um, and this is like a situation where they, they need help. You know, their flight might have gotten canceled or something's right. going on. And, and, and then they discover they left their laptop on their seat. And, and so it's, it's things that, you know, are like really annoying and require some immediate action. And it isn't you, in, um, in an age where you wouldn't know who to go to. Right. And, you, you know, you call the airline, you go to the help desk. Um, that they were showing that in a, in a sort of a conversational messaging realm, you can keep introduce. you know, you want to talk to the pilot, here's the pilot. You want yeah. to talk to the person cleaning the, the, the interior of the plane, you can do that. Right. Folks and that are getting the, uh, your luggage, <laughs> you, know, you could talk to anybody. It was, it was, it was an extreme case, of course, but the idea of being able to communicate with the right people, and you don't have to worry about you finding them or what channel that you have to use to find them, it's done for you because the company is, has a, a platform that allows them to incorporate the right people in at the right time and doesn't matter what the channel is. Yeah. And, it, and it's a vision. I mean, yeah. and that's what's kind of cool um, because we tend to think that these channels are one-to-one -one or that if you're in one-to-many, you know, you're, you're in a teleconference or, right. you know, you're in a conference, you're in a room or whatever. Or you're but in 1965 instead of 2019. It feels that way. Yeah. Right. So, and so it sort of said, hey, look, life is led where you are. Right. right. <laughs> and so all of this stuff is, is dealing with your offline self, your, your handle, your persona, um, and, and it's being handled. Yeah. And, uh, no, but this, so, so this, this is a developer show. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this is by far. I yeah. mean, uh, they started breaking out the, the whole command line interface stuff. That was, <laughs> actually, for those of you that are voice oriented, so this was like a return in one respect to green screen programming. Wow. I mean, that, that's what it was, but 
Um, once you're in command line, you realize that you, you could bring natural language into that as well. Because it, it was kind of cagey what they did, because <laughs> it was command line interface and somebody would do slash slash, you know, uh, some operator, and then it would complete it. There right. was a lot it was of... auto completion. There was it, a yeah. lot of machine learning that had already been done before that. But then my, my take is, gee, once you go to command line, why don't you just make it Alexa? Because, <laughs> right. because you should be able to talk that stuff. It's going to complete it. It's going to recognize it. So these no-code development environments might turn mm. out to be speech stuff. That's anyway. Interesting. That's so. Really but my point was, so this is a developer show. Um, we, we have our own show coming up, uh, a conference in Octo October 8th, the Conversational Commerce Conference. It's going to be, well, if you count our Intelligent Assistant Conference, which was the precursor here, it'll be like our sixth or seventh one. But the idea is um, to talk about the, the business needs that are fulfilled right. <laughs> by bringing these technologies which is how this started. <laughs> and the technologies themselves are, are um, sort of less interesting than the solutions right. that, that they um, provide. Some, I mean, like you know, that use case, that, was an in, that got my attention because I'm not thinking about it from a you know, developer perspective. But I was like, wow, think of the possibilities of being able to, to, in real time, connect the right person that could help, regardless of what channel that you, you have to get them on, but it connects them to the conversation is taking place between the customer. That's some good stuff. The other thing was interesting was the uh, the demo around, you know, Flex. Yeah. And being able to create your own, you know, integrated interface for folks that are on the, you know, call agents, you know, customer support and being able to keep them from having to go through five or six different pieces or applications, but you create your own interface and leverage what they have in order to do it. Uh, I, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, and, and for those who aren't following the, so um, Twilio Flex is their um, contact center. Yeah, uh, Cloud-based deal. Cloud-based deal. So think of it as competing with Amazon Connect, um, uh, the, the collective that Vonage has brought together with New Voice Media and, right. and um, Nexmo and, and, and Vonage, uh, uh, you know, Genesis, family of cloud stuff. So so we're living in a world where if you're in um, contact center administration options um, and uh, we're, we're, at a, we're at a very interesting point because because I agree with you this is really impressive but solution providers have this um, decision to make and the buyers have, have um, some questions to answer as they prepare to, to you know, upgrade or migrate move to the from cloud. What it, yeah. and, or move to the cloud and how much expertise or what it means, um, you know, what, what expertise uh, from the developer community do they need to have as employees or when do they want to lean on a professional services organization. So we're just we're just learning, you know, how you kick the tires of all these things, and what um, you know what tools they provide for quote citizen developers within within the um, business uh, staff. So I'm going to go off the board here, Dan, because okay. I know you've gone to a lot of events already this year. Uh, I'm not going to ask you what the best event is <laughs> since we're at one right now. Yeah, this is. But <laughs> I'm going to ask you what was the biggest uh, takeaway theme subject that you thought is going to at some point be the important thing in the next couple of years. Next couple of years? Next couple of years. <laughs> I'm not gonna say next six months. I'm no, I, okay. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah, I'm gonna lean on my, my old reliable one, which is how much of this just becomes a commodity? And not a mm. commodity in the, you know, oh, it's valueless, blah, 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 blah. It, it's, a, it's a commodity that the um, you know whether you're a contact center administrator, whether you're somebody that's a CX expert, whether you're the person responsible for the digital transformation of your company, um, um, what what components you know? It, and it you know yeah, what we, we started with this. Hey, you can call it conversational AI if you want to, uh, but um, what what is just going to be 
you know, uh, table stakes or, or right. there, and they're working reliably when it comes to natural language understanding, uh, which is, is in essence um, recognizing an individual's intent and having the capability of matching that intent with an answer or recommended action. And, and, we're, and you know, we're at a point where it's, it, a lot of this stuff is working really reliably, or yeah. we wouldn't see these people here saying, oh, Look at flex. I can just pull this down, put it in here. Yeah. Right. And, and um, they so were doing live demos, which is like, wow, okay. Yeah. Well, they, that, that's a hallmark here. Isn't it? <laughs> this is the developer show that's where right. they're brave <laughs> enough to do the live demos. But yeah. So, uh, you know, the message is the stuff is working, it's getting moved into the uh, critical path between companies and their customers. The engagement model is becoming a conversation, not a journey. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and life's good. Well, I think the way I look at it, conversations are part of overall interactions or you know, vice versa. And it's those interactions, those conversations connected over time, they create experiences. And those right. experiences are what make up the journey. Exactly. So there are, you know, they, going <laughs> from here to here without yeah, explaining all that is kind either of, or, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it's interesting. But, the, but the interesting thing is the conversations are being captured and subjected to analytics that are that then, in, you know, if you have confidence that, hey, this is Brett again, and last right. time he called, this was his top, and that gets served up either to a live agent or rendered through a virtual agent, we're improving the conversation even though it's happening over time. Right. Um, and right. You know, maybe it's a journey, <laughs> but, you know. But the, to, to me, the fact that they actually spent some time talking about that at a developer conference. Yeah, yeah. That did not happen a couple of years ago at a developer conference. They weren't, they weren't really worried about the journey stuff as much as they're the technology. Yeah. No. Now it's kind of cool that they're, they're, ex they're talking about it, and I think that helps because, you know, we, we talk about there's only a certain amount of time that you have to to create an experience or create an interaction that's going to have impact on a customer. And if you if if you can show developers how they can do that and the impact that that could have, I think yeah. that helps them to really understand, you know, the, the importance of what they're doing from the customer perspective. Yeah. I yeah. think that's a good thing. Well, that just made me flash on that video of the room with all the developers at Lyft. Um, oh, right. And, right. and I mean, there was, there's a, um, a an, an image of the developer with the blue <laughs> hair and the pierced nose and and and, um, and they're and you know they're very objective ba you know they have, they're solving problems right but what was really apparent is that um, these problems were the problems of the drivers of the passengers so there is this awareness that hey I'm not just writing code to you know yeah. To, to geek know, out. <laughs> that this, I just helped a driver get paid. You know, right. I mean yeah. that's kind of cool. I think that that immediate kind of impact that you can see that yeah. you're having on somebody that, that actually has got to be get, make you feel a little better about what you do. Yeah, yeah. So it's my eye, you know, getting on getting on the CRM ish kind of side of things. All right. So once again, tell us about the event. Give us a little October eighth conversational commerce. Um, we're, we're tackling real world issues, um, tying it to, to business value and looking at sort of, the, you know, the transition that this sort of thing dramatizes is that the investment that uh, companies have made in their customer care fabric, uh, so that does include CRM, it includes um, speech analytics and, and knowledge management on the back end. Um, and then on the front end, all these technologies that people talk about is like, at a minimum, chat bot or <laughs> answer bot, uh, but then that fanning out into what supports a truly intelligent uh, virtual agent um, and how they're being rendered. So we put an emphasis on real world use cases. We have a, a great number of the solution providers um, and then as is evidenced here, the world is ripe to just sort of bring these new technologies into your, uh, you know, well, one of the themes is that, that assistants um, gain 
vertical knowledge and become advisors and eventually um, and this is you know what what to look for not in the ne well maybe in the next three years or six years that they behave as the agent of the um, of the individuals that are using them so so mm. we, that's one thing we're we're uh, covering and then on the on the back end it's looking at all these discrete uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence functions actually evolving into what we're calling conversational service automation, mm -hmm. which I think is going to be a really powerful term and it, and it describes all at once um, how the conversation becomes a model for interacting with computer resources that um, these services, you know, whether it be the APIs or connectors to existing processes, um, are what you're putting the conversational front end in front of, and that sixty billion dollars <laughs> that's being spent um, is is truly resulting in improved um, customer experience on the one hand, employee efficiencies and happiness on the other hand, <laughs> and and all these wonderful themes. So we're going to pack that into a one day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's in New York, right? In New York City. New York City. Cool. Hey, Dan, I know you uh, got to get back to the conference yeah, here, but thanks for, thanks for well, the thank time, you. man. Thank you. Well Absolutely. done.